one tonight. We'll delve into the dynamic landscape of the aviation sector and its profound ripple effect on the economy, particularly in Nigeria, since the momentous launch of Airpiece Airlines Lagos to London route. We have witnessed a seismic shift in both air travel accessibility and economic dynamics. The introduction of this route has not only expanded travel opportunities for Nigerians, but has also sparked a notable impact on airfare prices as more carriers compete in these lucrative routes. We've observed a gradual decline in ticket prices, making international travel more affordable now for passengers. However, beyond the immediate implications for travelers, the ramifications extend deep into the aviation and economy sectors. The increased competition fosters innovation and efficiency within the aviation industry while simultaneously stimulating economic growth through enhanced connectivity and trade opportunities. Tonight, we explore the multifaceted impact of this development on the Nigerian aviation and the broader economy. I'm being joined by the proprietor and the CEO of Airpeace Airline, Mr. Alan Oyema. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. We need to roll the drums and perhaps <laughs> what they didn't do to, to your aircraft in Gatwick uh, traditionally, they're supposed to give you a water salute, yeah. but that didn't happen. Would have given you a water salute, but you've been so wet on national television. But kudos, congratulations on the, that achievement. When we see one of our own locally doing something good, we must together join our voices to say kudos. Congratulations, Mr. Oyema. Thank you very but much. What has been the experience, though? Well, uh, I have to say not just congratulations to Epis or Alan Oyema, but Congratulations to Nigeria. Uh, congratulations to the government of the day and uh, all one million people of Nigeria. This country has been fleeced over time. And uh, I'm a student of Martin Luther King who says that unless you bend, no one rides you. We've bent for them for so many years. This is the time for everybody to stand up right so that nobody will ride you. What we did in the last three weeks and what is happening now is an eye-opener to everyone that we, nobody can come and make your bed for you. We have to make, make that bed ourselves. And however you make it, so shall you lie on it. Mm. A situation where we allow this to happen for over 20 years now, or since the nation was born, is unacceptable. I mean, when you say, there are those who will say, oh, it's a... Um... It's a fit for Airpiece, and Airpiece is going to make, be making the money. Uh, but when you say that, congratulations to Nigeria and Nigerians and to the government, what do you mean? What benefit does it have for Nigeria and Nigerians? Yes, like I've always said in the past couple of days, it's no longer Airpiece. Airpiece belongs to over 220 million Nigerians. What Airpiece did two weeks ago, is benefiting the entire population of Nigeria, benefiting the government of the day, is benefiting the people of the day. Example, for example, you you were paying 15 to 70 million naira for business class going to the UK six hours flight, paying about six million for premium economy and about five, four to five million for economy, for so six hours flight. Before now, unacceptable. Then you go over to Ghana. You go back to Lome, you fly cheaper, half the, uh, more than half the price. You go to South Africa, nine hours from Johannesburg to the UK, you pay less. Now, the direct airlines, we are taking 17 million business class, 15 million business class, 6 million economy, 5 million economy. Those who are going indirect, when you start going to Qatar, eight hours, you suffer some three hours delay over there, or layover. Then you go to, I do another eight hours to London just because you want to cut, cut um, the cost. The cost. You go to Ethiopia, some five hours, you stay there for about three hours, you do another six hours or there about to, to the UK. You go to Morocco, you go to Egypt. In fact, Nigerians were able, had even started going to South Africa, six hours down the line, then you come up and fly over Nigeria, nine hours, they were suffering. They were paying through their noses. Even the indirect airlines also cashed in on this because they were offering business class for 8 million. Nigerians were, oh, this one is cheaper. 
They were offering economy for, say, 4 million or 3 million. Oh, this one is cheaper. Then APs came on board. APs could have, even more for patriotism and that nationalistic instincts in APs or principles in APs, we could have done 10 million business class. And Nigerians would clap. They say, oh, APs is cheaper. would have cashed in on it. How, how much did you charge for business class? 4 million. How much did you charge for first, uh, first class? 4.5. And uh, economy, uh, premium economy? Economy, 1.2 million, starting from 1.2 million. So we brought it down. Remember, the foreign airlines told you that was because of dollar, the exchange rate. They were selling so much. So apart from our people paying through their noses, I don't think this did to the economy. This dollar problem was not Tinubu's creation. I said it before now, and I've proved it to the entire world. People were blaming President Bola Tinubu. It was, it, it, it was, I mean, a play of uh, uh, both internal and external conspiracies. These airlines were taking into the market a lot of money, chasing dollar every day, buying at any amount. But they are always complaining that their monies are trapped with I'm coming, I'm coming. Chasing, but it's no longer CBN now. They take their money from their commercial banks go out there in the market buying dollar at any rate. And that was putting a strain on the Naira. Now, APs did this. Everybody came crashing from 17 million to 5 million. Dollar did not change. And the, the, using dollar as reason for whatever they were doing to us, the dollar they didn't change overnight. Yeah, they came down to 5 million. Now they're even selling, they're underpricing now. So I was advertising three hundred and fifty dollars, just to just to, just to, just to take. So that's why I said straight your, exactly. That's your why operation. I said that's why I'm saying congratulations to Nigeria on two few on, on I mean on two levels. One is you're no longer you don't have to sell your house to fly to the UK anymore. Two, the dollar has come crashing. We've proved that. If only we are patriotic in this country, we cannot do it. It's not for the government alone to do. Play your part. That's why I'm saying congratulations, Nigerians, because this country, we've achieved something yeah. collectively as Nigerians. All right. And the government of, has been supportive. Yeah. Also. One, one of the things, of course, I mean, as you, you can see on uh, the screen, is that this is a brand new Boeing aircraft. One of those aircraft that uh, uh, AP said they've purchase perhaps the kind of similar experience that you probably will get on some other airlines is what airpc is giving and so then the question is that uh, those who will say mr yema don't rejoice too yet because what you have just raised is uh, uh, those experts who have said we've seen other nigerian owned airlines who have gone through this route and frustrated out of the market the same strategy is being employed right now by some of those foreign airlines to drop the price so that people will now leave airpiece and go to those foreign airlines. Are you aware of those tactics? Of course. Of course. It's um, a very devilish conspiracy. Uh, all of a sudden, people are under, uh, airlines are underpricing. Underpricing. That is below the cost. Just in the space what, what, of one month. Yes. Not up to a month. One other airline was advertising $100. Another one, three hundred and five dollars, three fifty dollars. This, if you fill up the entire aircraft and carry people on the wings, it's not even enough to buy your fuel. So why are they doing that? Their governments are supporting them. Their governments are supporting them because Nigeria has been a cash cow for everybody. Their governments are supporting them. They so come that, here, they flee the country, yeah, and they even yeah. have opportunity to fly just around the country. Yes. The so way that, you will not as a, as a Nigerian, country. You not do that. So the, their governments are supporting them to do this and take a piece out. The idea is to take a piece out. And the moment they succeed in taking a piece out, Nigerians will pay 20 times over once again. It's going to happen if, God forbid, they're able to take a piece out. Because what is happening now is scary. And of course, even in Gatwick where you are, are you given 100% uh, cooperation? Let me tell you this. On the first day, on the first day, on the inaugural flight out of London, 24 hours to the time, they moved us to another check-in area, other than the place assigned to us. The place they gave us, the carousel was not working. So in, 
when you're checking people, you need to manually carry the load to go from 50 meters away to go and drop it somewhere else just to delay you. No other airline faced that. Frustrate your operation. Exactly. No other airline faced that. And the fact that they can that even use your ground handlers. They didn't even allow you to. They didn't allow permit you to, to land in Heathrow. To operate of course, in Heathrow. Of course. That one is. Uh, they will tell you no slot. Even even Gatwick. When we got to Gatwick, we now said, okay, let us take Gatwick. They say, oh, no slot available. When we pushed and pushed, they gave us a scattered slot. Today, 3 p.m. Next day, 2 a.m. The next day, who does that? So Festus Kayamo had to wed in, went to London with us, and to warn them, if you continue these stupid, foolish acts, the government of Nigeria will surely retaliate. And this is from the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We will retaliate. So the government of Nigeria has, so, has solidly backed LPs. Of course. I said that before the president during the IFTA. That is the truth. The government of Nigeria is behind APIs, making sure they didn't. But the government has to do more now. That is evident. There is a, maybe an unofficial statement about taking this airline out. Because when you charge 350, I've told you, put people, fill up every seat. People put passengers on the wings of the aircraft. You can never fear that particular. Place. I see so, the flag but, of Nigeria, the map of uh, the flag of Nigeria on most of Airpeace airline. And uh, it gives some sense of pride. Because we are flag carrier. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's uh, a lot of people are, we will yeah. say the British airline, Airways, is not owned by the British government. Yeah. The Virgin Airline is not owned by the British government. No. But the government in, those, in that country will back it and will support it and make sure that nothing happens to these airlines. Because it's a British investment. But, yeah. They create jobs for their people. So this is a Nigerian investment. This is a Nigerian investment. And for thousands of people, thousands. One of the we're weird times, we're seeing the government direct and indirect pushing and also supporting this, isn't it? Yeah. I said one or in a rare time, we've seen a government supporting a private interest oh, yeah. for the sake of Nigerians. Yeah, you saw Bayard on Anuga the other day telling uh, Professor Skiyamo that if anybody, if anybody tries to disrupt a piece of operations from within, sack immediately, that gave me hope. So the government of President Bola Tinubu is behind us. I'm here, I'm sure after the uh, Salah celebrations, I'll be meeting with government to see how we can help. It's not just air peace alone. Anything we do now is for the entire Nigerian aviation industry to succeed. If, if they take out air peace prematurely, this country will pay dearly for it. Ten times over, quote me, billions will be lost. There will be another heavy strain on the Naira. Remember, it's only yours that can save. I invite other Nigerian airlines to join the fray. Let them come. Let all of us do international operations. Yes, it's very, very dirty. International Europe politics is very dirty. But we, somebody has to pay the price. Like people say, oh, the London route is, very, is the most lucrative. No, it is not the most lucrative route. It is not. It, is, it has been the most lucrative because... There was no competition. And there was this unspoken alliance amongst airlines coming to Nigeria to charge any amount. So it became very lucrative for them. Now that APIs have entered the fray, it's no longer lucrative for APIs, it's no longer lucrative for them. Because the fares have been so drastically brought down. And their governments are supporting them to be able for them to be able to do what they are doing, they're targeted at taking APIs out of the market. So we need our government to come out and see what they can do to support. If it is a reduction of charges from, that we pay, we do it. Their own people are supporting them. We cannot be left to go in or alone. All right. I mean, I'd I like to know what will be the way forward. You're ready for this politics. You know that it is a very dirty arena, and you need to be tough to be able to. And on behalf of millions of Nigerians, and we are Chinese television, we are a private entity. And we are also supporting you, giving the backing and supporting, looking at another private interest, and we're saying kudos to you. You are making us proud, just as every private organization in Nigeria mm. should make Nigeria proud. And we say kudos to you. And when we wonder, what is the next step? What is the way forward? How do we guarantee that earpiece has come to stay on this international route for the sake of Nigerians? Yes, first of all, uh, I have to say this to you. I know why they are all scared of APIs. You know why? APIs is in the UK bona fide. We passed the TCO audit. 
So we are not just there doing wet lease. We are not going into the UK on the back of wet lease operations only. No, we are there bona fide as of right. We, they came, audited us. We passed their TCO audit, which is very, very stringent. It's all about safety. We passed it. So we got that TCO approval, which most airlines from Nigeria in the past never got. So they depended on wet lease. And when you depend on wet lease, I'm telling you, you're going to wet lease an airline from an airline over there. Whenever they wake up and want to deal with you, they use that lesser and take you out. The lesser will one day wake up and say, oh, we cannot continue with this. That is the end of your end of business. And they give, the cost of wet leasing is so high. That's the reason uh, Festus Kiyama went to Airbus to see collaboration the other time, you know, to see if Nigerian airlines could start getting uh, leased aircraft. All these airlines all over the world, they don't own their planes. Give it to Nigerian airlines. We own our planes. I own all the over 34 airplanes APs have bought. 100%. 100%. We own them. We purchase them with the ones that are still on order. We've, it's not supposed to be so. All these big airlines you see all over the world, name them, all of them, not, no exception. They don't own those aircraft. What they do is that they make orders from Boeing or Airbus or from Embraer. The, a lessor, a financier comes in, pays for it, and leases it to them. And maybe for 17 years or 15 years, they'll be paying lease renters back to the lessor. At the end of the lease, uh, the, the, the lease period, the, uh, the lessor will take the aircraft back and maybe sell or renew the lease. So it is very easy for them to build capacity. But over here, we uh, 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 have to cover money, just like you want to buy your house, you have to carry every money. And the banking, the banking system in this country should come up and do real banking, not making money for the owners. They should come out and do real banking, not about airlines alone. Exactly. When you go to Canada, the banking staff, his KPI is not a, about how many big men did you attract to the bank or about how much you're able to bring into the bank. It's about how many people you have been able to give loans to at the end of the year. If you stay abroad, every morning you see leaflets coming to your house from the banks, come and take loans. They make the society so easy. It's different in my country. Whereby the banks are not really disposing loans so they need to, to, to businesses. Up. They need to stand up. I said it the other day uh, 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 during the Easter with Mr. President. Let all of us help this government. We have a government now. Until another election, let's make sure the government succeeds. The only way to make the government succeed is not by lip service. Your small sphere, do that that could touch the lives of the people. When the people are happy, it rubs off on the government of the day. That's the best way to do things. Uh, Mr. First of so yeah, the banks are needed yeah. to come in for this financing aspect of aviation. You have insurance. And you they don't have anything give to fear. credit that will not frustrate and uh, exactly. strain the businesses. Mr. Kef, Professor Skeamo said part of his ministry's plan is to create a uh where there will be a community uh, where everything that has to do with the uh, the the um, the airports and all what have you will be created. Nigeria doesn't have any of those. Because you go to Atlanta, Delta. You go to Frankfurt, Lufthansa. You go to Dubai, Emirate. There are these airports and infrastructures, or these airlines and infrastructure are typified to them. They are, they are tied to them. In your own thinking, what do you think government needs to do in terms of uh, airline, aviation, infrastructure that will help this business to thrive? Well, um, uh, Mr. Kiyama has been talking about this uh, aerotropolis. What we had before, there was no plan. We didn't meet any plan, as he said. What I'm trying to do is now is to bring in experts to design this aerotropolis because it's not just about airlines alone. You have the hotels, you have uh, the banks, you have the rail, you have the uh, land transport, and uh, all of them, you know, keen into the aerotropolis. So it, 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 it has to be designed. But then the banking system and the financial world must also be ready mm -hmm. to develop this infrastructure. The, the, the present infrastructure is debilitating and is discouraging. So the government is saying they're going to do something about it. I think they've said about doing it. And they need every encouragement they can get to do that. If uh, Mr. Kiyamo can do that, 
that is kudos to the government. And but the most important aspect is this leasing that he went out there in France to, to, to look for. If he can succeed in getting Nigerian airlines to be able to access dry lease as against wet lease, that will help the industry so much. And going to the UK, you asked a question the other time, how do we intend to sustain the tempo? We, in EPIS, we can play our part, but I keep on saying the government has a huge part to play. We are in the market now trying to at, buy more triple sevens uh, to make sure uh, we have enough. Because remember, EPIS is doing Guangzhou, China. Every Wednesday, we are doing uh, India too. We are doing Saudi Arabia. South Africa, and uh, Dubai is about to happen again. And now um, we are doing London, which is a piece of cake, just six hours. A piece flies about 160 hours daily in this country. 160 hours of flying, unblemished, daily. So this noise about London, you people, deal with people Embraer. Query. Yes, you, people, people. You are dealing with Embraer, you have Boeing. Of course, on your, on your brand fleet. new planes. It's so... Uh, this question about how oh, can he fly to London? I wonder. Epis flies 14 hours nonstop to Guangzhou, and um, the, the plane lands within two hours. That same plane takes off, start coming back another 14 or 15 hours nonstop. So why, why do you want to? Why can't we uh, take ourselves away from that slave yeah. mentality that our own cannot Mr. do? Mr. Onyema, let me ask you, and frankly speaking, because I imagine. The president is watching, uh, the whole nation is watching right now. And let's get together as a people. What do you fear the most? Uh, what is your biggest fear about what you have uh, put your hands on in terms of these routes? Well, if it comes to the, the UK route, I know it's not a child's play. It's not easy to take food away from somebody and you expect the person to lie, uh, lie on the ground for you. You're expecting Everybody, them that they will fight back? They are already fighting back. I tell you one thing, every day, APIS we posted 100% on time departure from Nigeria. 100%. We make sure we push out before time. We're, we've always been landing in the UK on time. On time and before sure. the time. We've never landed after the time. We've always landed before the time. There are some windows you're allowed to land before the time. You even have a window to maybe two minutes or three minutes or five minutes after the time. We never landed on the time. We landed before the time, at all times. But what happens out of UK? We've not, land, we've not left UK on time. Because of operational issues. Because we have been deliberately frustrated. Different ways they will frustrate you in all you ways. You think a government to government uh, bilateral talks can resolve of this? Of course, of course, of course. We are, we, are, we are compiling a whole dossier of what has happened in the last one week for the federal government of Nigeria to step in. Because remember, there are this 820 principle. If you don't achieve 80% on-time departure out of that place, you are stopped from coming in again. And you so know they use that to yeah. say, you can't come in again. Me, 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 now, me. every time the grand handler, they can use the grand handlers, they can even use your catering, they can use, um, so like sometimes, the other day, we finished boarding. For 20 minutes, they were looking for grand handlers everywhere. You couldn't see the ground handlers to load one of the craters in, in, into the aircraft. And when they come, no reason will be given to you. No reason whatsoever. I've told you the one of giving us a carousel where... A dead carousel. A dead carousel. We need to be carrying our load. And when we got to the boarding gate, they said, oh, the system uh, uh, collapsed. Also, I mean, the IT collapsed. Yeah, so so, Mr. so Yipa, the government yes. needs to know this. And the government and, Nigeria and needs know, to stand up to the government Let them know the that if you stop yeah. APIS any day, because government has to look at our operational listen out of Nigeria to, to the UK. 100%. 100%. So what is going on there? What is going so on there are those, Mr. Yema, saying that it is not only Fessor Sekeyamo, because he's in charge of aviation. Mm -hmm. There are those who are asking the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Minister of Trade, <laughs> An investment to also stand up and ensure the safety of Nigeria's business interest in those countries. Because at the end of the day, they will find some excuse and come after airpiece if this is not done, isn't it? Yeah, if it's not done, they will do that. But you remember when we did our inaugural flight, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Trade, they were all there to show support that this is a Nigerian project. It's not about airpiece now. It's a Nigerian project. And really, once I was 
I became, I, I've always been proud of my nation, but I became prouder of being called a Nigerian. The way the government, the present government came out, rallied around uh, Kayamo when they fought against the slot regime they were giving us. Now, the Minister of Trade also came on board, Foreign Affairs came on board, and they are doing that. Look at the Nigerian High Commission in, um, uh, 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 in the UK, the Acting High Commissioner made sure APs were on the billboards. All the buildings surrounding that place, they were littered with videos of APs coming to London. I've, we've never had it so good. Mm -hmm. We've never had it so good. The support from President Tinubu's government was massive, and I thank him. Mr. Allen Oyema, we can only wish you the best. I mean, just uh, about when I was about entering the, uh, the studio, I saw a videotape of a pastor in Lagos, Pastor Wale Oladiyu, having a special prayer for you. <laughs> oh, another one, not, yeah. uh, not at the person. <laughs> no, this is a pastor in Lagos, Wale Oladiyu, who organized a special prayer for you. And there's individuals also who are wishing you well. Sorry, so, like... shall we may allow me to say something? Pastor Defrasi, where is he from? He's a Yoruba man. Yeah. The Wale Wale Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah, from Ocean State. He's a Yoruba man. Yeah. Jide Yanwura. Yeah. Is a Yoruba man. Jide Yanwura that wrote the first piece, warning Nigerians about what he saw in Gatwick, about the deliberate antics those who are trying to bring to bear on APs. I want Nigerians. We must stick with APs. That whatever happens. Must stick with APs. He was the first person to do massive positive review. What does that show? Because one Yoruba man talked about the Isiago dress, yeah. <laughs> and people were, see, I don't even want to go into 99 percent of Nigerians, <laughs> yeah. Yorubas, Igbos, uh, Aousazo, Fulanizo, yeah. Birom, uh, Shekiri, whatever. All Egalas, all of them support APs. The it's fact that one single person <laughs> uh, just in his heart tweeted some silly comments, don't, don't distract. Mr. So Emma, people should not bother about that. Look, on this note, the whole nation is behind you. Yeah. We're supporting you. And yeah, here at Channel Television, we're also rooting for you. For you to succeed, when you succeed, all of us succeed. All the best. Congratulations again, Mr. Allen Oyema. Proprietor and CEO of Airpeace. Thank you so much indeed for Thank coming. Thank you very tonight. much. Congratulations, Nigeria. Thank you so much indeed. <laughs>